Hey guys, it's Eddie here. Today I want to shoot a little video on using the Mega Ohm meter. Uh, the meter I've got that I'll be using right now is the uh, Sepco M500. Uh, what this is going to do is basically it shoots 500 volts through the system and it measures its resistance to ground. Uh, we check, you can check the windings in the compressor, you can check the wiring inside your motor, the wiring going to the motor, anywhere there's if there's any resistance it picks it up. A regular volt ohm meter uses anywhere from 10 to 12 volts so it's just a real small voltage running through there. This particular one uses 500 volts. There's some of them go up to 1000 volt, 1500 volts. Uh, so there's some pretty high power. This is just a basic mega ohm meter. Um, it's good for what I do. Alright, it runs on 2C batteries. It's got two wires that come out of it. Alright. Basically all you do is you take your black wire, you hook it to the casing somewhere. You take a red wire. I usually start off just by hooking it straight to the contactor here. And what I do is I go ahead and push the red button. And if there's any resistance in there, it'll pick it up here. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see that on the camera, uh, but it is picking up just a little bit. Now, if I were to get a red light, basically the way this graph works, uh, 100 to 1,000, uh, you know, you're picking up some resistance, but I don't think there's really anything, no need to worry about it. You just want to just keep an eye on it. When you get in between 100... Between 30 and 100, uh, you're getting pretty close to having some serious problems. Uh, you might want to come back out to the house every, I don't know, three, four months just to keep an eye on it. Uh, I mean, you may have problems. We'll go over some of the problems here in a minute. 30 and below, uh, you know, you've got something bad, something shorted. All right, so what to do is push a red button. You'll measure your resistance value. I'm going to go ahead and create a dead short. Touch that wire right there to the ground. So now when we do it, now I've got red light that's coming on. Right, so that's telling me I've got a short to ground. Now at this point, what I would do, I would go ahead and uh, unhook the compressor. Now, I didn't say this from the get-go, but you got to make sure your wires are unhooked from your disconnect to the contactor. You don't want any power going to this. Pull your disconnect. You don't really have to unhook your wires right at this point, but you go ahead and pull the disconnect. All right, so make sure you don't have any power going to this. I would unhook my compressors. That wire was on there good and tight. All right, so these are the three wires going to my compressor. I would make sure that they're not touching each other. Just make sure they're not touching anything. Then I would go through and I would test that. Alright, so that's reading over a thousand mega ohm. See how it disappears? So that tells me my compressor is in pretty good shape. Alright, then I would go and I would do my fan motor. Alright, I would test the resistance across my fan motor to see if that was the problem. If you were to find out when you tested your compressor that it's still showing a short, uh, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to go down to the compressor where these plug in and you're going to have to take that cap off there and make sure the wires aren't burnt off there because uh, that's going to show this to be bad too. Alright, if you look up Mega Ohm Meter and Supco, actually look up Supco Mega Ohm Meter, you'll find a PDF, it's the M500 Mega Ohm Meter. Uh, why all service technicians need this instrument. There's one spot down here at the bottom I want to kind of read off to you. Answering a call where the problem is a hard starting condition is more involved than merely replacing a defective relay, starting capacitor, or installing a hard start kit. The unknown factor is how long did the, the unit cycle on the overload before the consumer realized the house was getting warm. 
and called the service dispatcher. In other words, was the windings overheated to a point that could have damaged the insulation. This unknown factor of overheating windings is also present on calls that relate to dirt clogged condensers, defective condensing fan bearings, or motors, and brownout burnouts. Whenever a sustained motor overload condition exists before you arrive on the job site, a mega ohm meter test tells both you and the com co consumer if there was any damage to the winding insulation. Putting this information on the consumer's receipt and recording it in the office records is sound business practice for any future problems and assures that the customer that the service engineer knows his business. Uh, pretty much just tells him we're not a hack. I had to throw that in there. Uh, so, you know, like I said, if you're if you're testing them out, uh, you know, something you should do on on your preventive maintenance is this is something that you want to record over a period of time. Uh, if it shows 30 or below, uh, more than likely you've got a burn burnt up wiring or winding or you got a burnout. Uh, you can smell the oil and know if you've got a burnout. Uh, you'd have to do a moisture test to see if there's any water in the refrigerant. You ought to look at it and getting one. Uh, it's just something, just another tool in your arsenal to make you look professional. Uh, it gets you some respect points from the customer. Uh, more than likely, they don't know what any of this stuff is, but you know, you're just doing your job. You're going to make sure the unit's running uh, to the best of its abilities. Uh, you're going to ensure long-lasting equipment uh, and, you know, detect future problems before they arise. Alright guys, we well, appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. Uh, if you have any questions or anything, just shoot me an email. Uh, I'll answer the best as I can. Alright, thanks.